can use Boolean algebra in order to manipulate and simplify logical expressions. There exist several relationships we can use to help us to do this. We've got the zero and unit rules. So these are pretty straightforward and they just come from the AND and OR gate truth tables. So A AND zero will give us zero because we know with an AND gate any time one of the inputs is a zero, the output will be zero. A AND one just gives us A. And then for all the OR gate truth tables, A OR one will give us a one. So as long as one of the inputs is a one, it doesn't matter what the other one is. So we'll get a one on the output. And similarly, if we've got A or zero, that's what's going to give us A. Now we've also got several complement relations. So A and not A must be equal to zero. Because it doesn't matter. If A is zero, not A will be equal to one. So we can end up, and that's going to be equal to zero. Or if A is one, not A will be zero. So one of those will always be zero to give zero on the input. Similar for R works in a similar way. If A is zero, not A must be one. So we know zero one gives us one. And similar if it's if A is one and not A will be zero, we're gonna get one on the input. And then we've also got A bar bar equals zero. So that's double inversion. You know, so that just kind of cancels out. So it's Imagine you've got a circuit just with two um, not gates one after the other. Now those not gates are going to cancel. You put a one here, we get a zero on the output, but then this one will reinvert it back to a one. So two not gates or two not operators are just cancel out. So we've got the idempotence laws. So A and A is just A, and A or A is A. Now the commutative laws, they essentially show that it doesn't really matter which order you know, you define your inputs. So A or B is equal to B or A. The same A and B is just equal to B and A. So this, this is just the same as a um, normal algebra. If you're doing 3 times 5, it's the same as 5 times 3. So the order of the operator uh, doesn't matter. And we've got um, various absorption rules. So it turns out A or A and B can just be simplified to A. So we know that if we um, we know A is just equal to A and A. So we can all that with A and B. So this we know this expression here is just A. So that's just the equivalent of this here. So then from this we can take A out as a common factor. So we'll have A and 1 plus or 1 or B. So we just, we just simplified this to A. Take that A out as a common factor. So that'll leave us 1 or B. And then we know this is just going to be, this is just equal to 1. So that'll just leave us A and 1, which is just equal to A. The second one is very similar, so we can just multiply that out. We'll have A and A, or A and B. So again, we know that that simplifies to the essentially the one above. So we can just take out again A as a common factor. And we're left with A and 1. Which is just equal to A. So the last one, the last absorption rule is a bit harder to understand. So if you've got A or B, let's put that in brackets, you can actually and that with not A or A. Because we know that this is essentially 1. So doing something and one is just you know doesn't affect it. So we can we can add this term in without altering the expression. And then we can just multiply that out. So just as it you're doing normal brackets, that'll give us a and not a. 
and an A, B, and not A, and finally A and B. So we can look at this expression now. So we know this is equal to zero, so we can just cancel that and forget about it. And then again, we know this is just equal to that's just a. So I'm going to take this a which is a common factor. So I'll just a one, and then with this a, I'll have a b or And then we know this is going to be equal to 1, so just, that just leaves us with a and 1 and not a and b, or just a and not a and b. And we've got the distributive laws, that's just sent to multi multiply and eight brackets. So you can the top one you just multiply out the terms, the second one you multiply out this part then you can use some of the absorption laws to simplify that down to this. The associative laws are just showing that you can group uh, the inputs in different ways. So A or B or C, you, know, you can do A or B first, you know, so they're shown in brackets, or you can do B or C, so that's, you know, they're saying you can do, the order of operations can be done in any order. And A and B and C, we can group those and those and they're exactly the same. Now we've got these other theorems called De Morgan's theorems, we'll look at later. So these are important because these help us to create order the logic gates from NAND gates. So there's some important observations from these rules. If you note the duality, so for all the laws, you can swap the operation. So if it's if it's an AND, you can swap it to an OR and then swap the zeros for ones and you'll end up um, creating the other rules. We know that double knot gates cancel. So this complement relation, that becomes very useful when we're uh, simplifying circuits. The order of the inputs to gates doesn't matter. So that comes from the commutative laws. And then the associative laws show that we can create multi-input gates from two input gates. So a three input gate, we can actually create from two two inputs, so we'll see next. So a NOR gate is equivalent to an AND gate with negative inputs. That comes from De, De Morgan's laws. And again, NAND is equivalent to an OR gate with negative inputs, which also comes from one of De Morgan's laws. So we'll see you later. They're very useful uh, rules. So for multi-input gates, the associate associative law shows that we can use the two input gates to create gates of more inputs. So these two, these top, these top two circuits are just exactly the same. You know, say this A, B, and C, so that'll give us A or B. So on the output here, we've got A or B or C. So on the second one. That'll be, and then we know from the sort of all these two equivalents. So by connecting two 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 input gates together like this, you can create essentially a three input OR gate. But rather than drawing out using the two input symbols, we just tend to use a symbol like this. So you can just for multi input gates, you can just add on more lines on the input as you need. Now De Morgan's theorems, I said these are very important. And we'll come to use those uh, later. So the first law states that the complement of a product of variables is equal to the sum of the complemented variables. So you have to write that down um, using an equation. And you can see on the left, so that this is a complement. So no A and B is a product. So we complement the entire thing. So you can see that's, that's actually a NAND function. So that gives us an AND gate. And that's equal to the sum, so we know what we do a sum using an OR gate. So it's equal to the sum of the complemented variables. So an AND gate is equal to an OR gate with negative inputs. So here we put the bubbles on the input just to show that the inputs are complemented. 
and then the converse de Morgan's theorem is that the complement of a sum of variables is equal to the product of the complemented variables. So again, we can see this expression on the left. We can recognize that as a no gate. So that's a or function, the gate put inverted. So that's a no function. And that's equal to an and gate with inverted inputs. So the very easy way to remember these, which I use is break the line and change the sign. So for both of these, so A and B, with uh, inverted, so this NAND function, if you break the line, that'll give us that, and then change the sign. That's a very easy way to remember, and it obviously works on this side as well. So break the line, we'll end up with not A, or not B, and then change the sign. So I'm going to change that all to an AND. So break the line and change the sign is a very easy way of implementing De Morgan's theorems.